I'm here today with Dr. Scott Eccles. He's a researcher, clinician, inventor, entrepreneur, uh, and the founder of Scarlet Imaging. Um, Scott has used more types of CT technology than anyone else I know, from the very high-end CTs to micro CTs, and of course, Vimigo HDVI high definition volumetric imaging technology. So, Scott, I know when we first met, um, you wanted to discuss our imaging capabilities because you'd been frustrated with some of the technology you'd used in the past for your applications. Can you talk a little bit about that? Tell me what was the Sure, point? and that was really what drew me to Epica was looking at the technology that you had because a lot of the products we were working with, we could get you know, fast scans, lower resolution, we can get um, high resolution scans, but they took a really long time on the micro level, so we had small fields of view. And I really need something that uh, was a happy medium where I could get relatively fast scans with high resolution. That's what I want. I want the images. I mean, I want to see that clarity and I want to see what I'm looking for and I don't want to have to guess. And that's really what drew me to Epica and the Vimigo system to begin with. And we worked with the Pegaso, the Pico, and so forth. So Scott, in using the Vimigo as a workhorse as you have, how has it really worked out for you? Uh, using the Vimigo system and then any other system I work with. And I do a lot of uh, imaging studies. So I've worked with, of course, MRI, CT, and a large variety of scanners on both units. And what I'm really looking for is that image clarity and detail and accuracy. So, yeah. Okay. So you need the spatial resolution, of course. Yes. And contrast is, of course, mm -hmm. important to you. I mean, Scott's the inventor of many kinds of contrast for different tissue types. Um, how does the contrast resolution of the Vimigo work? Oh, it's exceptional. And, and that's very important because when you're looking for fine details in between like tissues, that contrast is what separates out. And as a clinician, I need to know that information uh, for making a clinical decision, whether it's do I do surgery, is this a medical application? And we actually use the Vimigo diagnostically on so many different levels. And it's not just a CT that we're going to look at bones and fracture. We do that, of course. We actually look at soft tissue problems as well, and we have to have that resolution and that distinction between similar tissues. So we know that CTs, MRIs, radiographs, mm -hmm. ultrasounds all have their applications. Are, do you feel like you're able to diagnose or see things now using a Vimigo that wasn't really possible before? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Vimigo has changed how we practice, and it's also changed how I communicate with others in my profession because I'm trying to explain to them why they need that level of uh, clarity and resolution and so forth. It makes a difference in how we diagnose and interpret the problems in dealing with the animals. And of course, we use it with human issues as well, and it's incredible what we're able to see. We're actually identifying anatomy we did not know existed. Awesome. So, if you could have if somebody were to come and offer you for free a conventional CT scanner of your choice mm -hmm. or a Vimigo. All right. What would for your daily use, what would you choose? Well, the conventional stuff doesn't work for me. So it wouldn't get used. So the easy answer is I would take a Vimigo. That was a setup answer. <laughs> Thank you. So we're here in front of our Voxel View workstation. Uh, it's the reader that, that clinicians use in the practice to share images and do their diagnoses. And we're looking at an image that, Scott, you helped us mm -hmm. with a new contrast protocol yesterday uh, to look at these kidneys. Would you explain what we're looking at here? Sure. So here we're looking at, this is a dog kidney right here. And of course, we can scroll through that so you can see the right versus the left kidney there. And also you can even make out the intestines with really great detail. So what we've done is a two-phase protocol. And that protocol involves using a contrast while we do the CT. And then we stop and then do a second CT. And this is the post-contrast CT. And what's great about this protocol is it allows us to understand function of tissue. Not just the anatomy, 
which is what we're so used to seeing. And now we have the option to actually understand about how that tissue is active. And a lot of people will think about, well, kidney tissues are what we most often think about, renal clearance, GFR, and so forth. Well, we can do it really with any tissue. So even if you were looking at intestine here, we can start to see, is there constriction of blood flow, such as with an intussusception or some other type of strangulating lesion, or do we have increased blood flow that may, we may see even with a foreign body that may cause increased vascularization or cancer or something like that? And we can understand more about the biology of that tissue by looking at the phase during contrast administration and then shortly after. So just looking here at the kidney, we actually, this is our post-contrast, and we've lost some of the contrast out in the outer regions, the cortex, and now we have greater contrast in the medulla, and of course, right in the renal pelvis, going down, and there's the ureter. So this tells us that this kidney is come, is accurately and properly taking that contrast material, going through the system and eliminating it, which is what it should be doing. So this is a good contrast study, and obviously the images are beautiful. We really see a lot of detail here. You can see differentiation uh, between fat and soft tissue, and because of the contrast, uh, we really get some great information about all the organs in the abdomen, not just the kidneys. That's fantastic. Have you ever seen a conventional CT be able to scan with this kind of quality? It's no, amazing. not even close, no. Yeah, we, we don't even get near that kind of detail. So, Scott, as we've discussed, we can, of course, from voxel view, launch directly into our immersion tool, which is this virtual reality uh, tool controlled by the hand uh, pieces and the headset. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on this technology? So this is kind of like that crazy cool tech. It also has real applications in clinical and surgical medicine. And that's what's different about the system. It's so far ahead of, uh, I've looked at a lot of VR, AR, and so forth. And this technology is really out there, which is fantastic. But the reality is we can actually use it for surgical planning and understanding three-dimensional, very complex shapes and geometries of parts of the body and being able to look at it, to walk through it, to walk around it, and to study it. And we use that, like I'll use that sometimes for surgical planning. That's a great example, especially complex fractures and so forth, to be able to study it from all angles, to look into it, to cut into planes and see. And that's a very powerful tool uh, to be able to take those data sets from the CT scan and then put them into an engine like this and be able to look at them. It's really amazing. 